Councilor Carson? Here. Councilor Fritz? Here. Councilor McGinty? Here. Councilor Reed? Here. Councilor Watson? Here. Representative Martin? Here. And Representative Faraday? May I pledge allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Citizens discussion of items not on the agenda. Is there any citizen who wishes to bring to the attention of the town council some item not on the agenda tonight? We have uh, councillors reports and correspondence. Is there any councillor with something of note to report? Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, the Historical uh, Preservation Committee met and we're going to meet the next three months and uh, uh, try to arrive at a definition of uh, what property should be included and uh, that type of issue in uh, advancing that committee's uh, proposal, which will come back to the council in the spring. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Councillor Reed. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would just like to uh, remind the public that we are uh, accepting applications currently for the Community Center Study Committee, and that if anyone would be interested in applying or finding out more information about the committee, that will um, take a look at the needs of the youth and the senior citizen population. Uh, for Cape Elizabeth, then we are accepting applications, and uh, the Appointments Committee will be making uh, a decision in the next month. Thank you. Ready? Councilor McGinty. I uh, apologize. I have a cold, so if I don't sound too well, I um, apologize in advance. Um, a week ago, we met with the school board. They invited us over and hosted a, uh, a dinner and a, a workshop, and um, I thought it was very helpful, um, very insightful, obviously. It's nice to be able to sit down with um, the school board and talk about matters in a, in a uh, more personal setting than the formality of a school board or budget meeting or something like that. I thought it was very useful and uh, appreciated the opportunity to do that. And I should add, uh, we were on a tour of the uh, new facility, of the, well, the renovated 1930s building that community service is going to be able to move into very shortly. And uh, I think I speak on behalf of the whole council in particularly thanking Ernie McVean and Sue Weatherby for the outstanding job both of them have done in causing that project uh, to almost come to completion. Anyone else? Now we have the town manager's report. Mr. McGovern. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. At last month's town council meeting at the conclusion or near the conclusion of the meeting, the town council Went into, in, went into executive session uh, to discuss the status of the public works contract. Uh, they ultimately came out of the executive session and voted uh, to approve uh, a draft contract uh, with the Teamsters Union representing our public works employees. Uh, subsequent to that, the Teamsters Union representatives here in Cape Elizabeth uh, voted on it, they approved it, and the contract is now in place. So I'd like to uh, thank uh, the council for their assistance, particularly Councilor Berry, who participated uh, during that process, and also would like to thank Bob Malley as well for uh, his help, and uh, as well as the Teamsters. It was, it was the first contract, and while we had many disagreements along the way, it was always a, a very civil and uh, gentlemanly process, so thank you. Thank you. We have the minutes of the previous meeting of December 14th, 1998. Is there a motion? Move Councilor Berry. Move to accept the minutes as read. Second. Second. Councilor Fritz. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Seven to zero. <clears throat> Item number 79. Consideration of the approval of the boundary preambulation with the city of South Portland. Mr. McGovern. Yes, uh, during much of last year, the town worked with the city of South Portland on determining the boundary between the city of South Portland and the town of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, the council had a number of workshops on it. 
with the City of South Portland. Ultimately, uh, the City of South Portland at a meeting in December uh, approved the boundary. Uh, and this action this evening under item number 79 uh, would have the Town Council in Cape Elizabeth adopting the same resolution as the City of South Portland, only uh, it would be signed eventually by you folks instead of by uh, South Portland. In the end, uh, once you approve this, you will be getting a plan that we'll probably have at the next council meeting for you to actually sign, uh, and then that will be filed in the Registry of Deeds, assuming uh, this is approved. And I think we need a public hearing. And at this time, uh, we'll have a public hearing on the, this issue. Uh, public hearing is now open. Anybody wishes to speak and come forward and speak to this issue? Seeing that there's no one that has come forward, uh, the public hearing has now concluded. Uh, is there a motion? I, I will move the motion. Um, item 79, would you like it to be read in its entirety or part of it? <laughs> Is the totality of the motion uh, as set forth in our packet entitled Draft Motion for Cape Elizabeth Town Council? Yes. And the gist of that is, in fact, to uh, approve. Uh, uh, is there any councillor who wishes this read? No? Is there a second to the motion? Second. Second by Councillor Carson. Further discussion? Councillor Reed. Uh, Mr. Chairman, could we just have the minutes reflect that there was a uh, meeting? held prior to the uh, town council's uh, public hearing in which people were uh, participants in a discussion with the originators of the boundary, et cetera, just yeah. for the record. For Along with, I believe, most of the town council. Yes. And I think, uh, obviously, that uh, session was uh, quite beneficial. Work. <laughs> That's a fine idea. Uh, further discussion? Were the originators of the boundary, Mr. Chairman, uh, there? Or uh, was it the surveyors? Whatever. <laughs> It'd be pretty old. <laughs> They'd be pretty ancient. But no. <laughs> no further discussion. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Unanimous 7 to 0. Item number 67 uh, had previously been tabled. The item uh, concerns can consideration of approval of proposed engineering construction services services agreement for the former Levitt property. Is there a motion uh, to bring this item forward at this time? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor of bringing this item forward tonight? Taking it off the table? Seven to nothing. Uh, is there in fact a motion at this door? The motion I guess is uh, on the floor. Is there uh, someone that uh, would like to make the motion to consider approval of the proposed engineering and construction services agreement for the former Levitt property. I'll move that and the changes reflected in this document as compared to the document that we had when we put it on the table. In other words, I want the motion to reflect that it's this document that we're talking about, not the one that was put on the table. That's right. Last this week. is the modified contract. Right. Right. So I will move acceptance of that. Of the modified contract. Of the modified contract. Is there a second? Second. Councillor Reed. Discussion. Do an introduction. Well, Mr. McGovern, why don't you lead off the discussion? Yeah, I just wanted to do a, a brief introdu introduction on this item. The town council had a number of concerns last month on, on this contract. Uh, felt that that it was on the high side, and also had some questions as to the process that we had gone through. Uh, we did have a. Uh, one meeting and a couple, and three or four discussions actually uh, with OST Engineering on this contract. Uh, the change from last month is that the cost has been reduced a little bit more than 10 percent from what the cost was uh, last month. Uh, the, and I think, the, I think that's a fair resolution of, of the cost issues involved in the contract. Uh, furthermore, I think there were some questions or concerns and confusion and a whole host, all of those things, uh, on the bid process that is used for design contracts in the town of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, generally, a, when we go out on a big project for uh, planning, for design, 
uh, we go through a request for proposal process. In this particular instance, we did that uh, at the point of first developing the master plan in the, the original schematic design phase. Uh, that was done, I think we sent out about 25 uh, requests for proposals. We got nine back. Uh, Gilly Jordan, who's here, the chairman of the facilities 2000 committee, uh, was involved in the interviewing of about five firms, and OST Engineering, OST Associates, was chosen at that time. Uh, at that point, they, the, the budget for that first phase was $67,000. That included the master plan for the Levitt property, some initial survey work, as well as the, the master plan and the schematic design of the fire station and of the uh, police station that would go here in the center of town, uh, renovating the former public works garage. It also included the, the original uh, schematic design for the ball fields for the public works garage and for trail work uh, on, the, on the former Lovett property. Uh, this particular contract is for $268,780. This is for all of the things that were delineated in that long list that you got uh, in, in the contract that was in your workshop packet. Uh, it is uh, roughly 10 percent of the, of the estimated cost of what the project will be, uh, is now estimated. That is certainly in line with the Bureau of General Services recommendations uh, that they have from from uh, the state of Maine. Uh, it, uh, you know, I think the, you know, Gilly is here more to speak for the committee than I am, but I think they've been very pleased with OST work uh, on the Levitt property uh, on this project uh, with the master planning and the work in the public works garage. Uh, if we wanted to go to another firm at this point, it would, it would not be impossible. However, it would be unusual. Usually, if you're with a firm, you appreciate the work they're doing, you're satisfied with the work, you usually continue with them once you've gone through the RFP process to the end of the, the project. And as, you know, as I said, I see no reason why not to do that. If we went to another firm, it would probably delay it six months, and I'm, I'm not too sure it would save much because of you know, the, the added cost for waiting six months as well as, as the fact that this certainly appears to be within line. So I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, that you might have, and Harvey Ost, uh, who's the principal of uh, Ost Associates, uh, the associate in Ost is uh, here as well. Thank you. Discussion. Council. Uh, Chairman Groff, uh, I've had some concerns about this contract, and I, some of those have been, have been clarified, and I'd just like to, to just um, mention a few of them currently as we go forward. Um, I'm glad that, that um, uh, Manager uh, McGovern has told us that the 67000 that was in the original RFP is on top of this original or this um, additional uh, budget of 268, so it brings us up to about 336,000 for the master plan, the design, the schematic, and then the actual construction uh, phase of, of this project. And um, you know, I think this is a lot of money to spend for for um, for this construction part of the process. But I understand that um, you know it uh, seems to be within reason based on what Michael has told me. Um, however, I would like to, to make note that I'd like this to, to be a number that we hold to, this 268. We've seen some reduction in it in the past month of 32,000, which I think is, is a, a real positive sign. I'd like us to hold real tight to this. But also when we look at under Exhibit B in the packet, and we look at the specific um, costs associated with, with the plan, I would like to request that, that OST Associates re-look at the job related expenses, <clears throat> excuse me, and the professional consultant subcontractor expenses of cost plus, plus a percentage. I would like to see that since the, the nature of this project is such that we're paying for administrative costs, et cetera, I'd like to see that additional um, buffer of the additional percentage above cost to go away. That's what I, a request I'd like to have someone can, um, take under consideration, if that's at all possible. I, I didn't understand. Um, On which page are you? Uh, my exhibit, other under Exhibit D, mm -hmm. in the back of um, 
the memo that we got on December 31st, design contract for the Levitt property from Michael. Yeah. In there, it outlines the specific expenses that are um, that we are going to incur per uh, per cost item from OST Associates, such as what you know we're going to pay per hour for their people, what we're going to pay per hour for administrative expenses, et cetera. And um, I'm trying. It doesn't have a specific page. It's just Exhibit D. Um, and I just had it and it escaped me now. Before the map. Just before the map. And at the what I'm referring to is at the bottom um, of it is under job related expenses, cost plus ten percent, professional consultant and subcontractors cost cost plus fifteen percent. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to do is I'd like to see those numbers, if at all possible, come in at cost for us since I think that a lot of the additional charges could be incurred from other places, such as word processing, administration, and that type of thing. But I don't know. Maybe that's just not the way it's done. Well, Councillor, how about uh, if we have uh, Mr. Olst uh, further explain to the Council that particular item under uh, Exhibit D and uh, discuss from his point of view um, why that item is structured as it is. Harvey. Good evening, and I'm good evening, and I'm glad to respond to that. Uh, first, I will tell you that, uh, in, in my estimation, and I've been in the business for for years, uh, this is fairly normal, okay, for for what we have. Okay. Uh, to explain it just a, a little bit further, again. Uh, the Exhibit D was placed in here for anything that we might do with additional services beyond what we have in the contract. Okay. We add the additional percentage, and we never know what we may have for additional services. We could be out there digging, uh, you find Indian bones, uh, then we have to go and you, you get the specialized people uh, who are involved in a project for, for doing that. Uh, when we take them through us, uh, the additional 15 percent covers us for additional things like professional liability insurance, which we are still charged for when we hire an additional consultant. Uh, it also takes into consideration any of the administrative uh, type functions that we would have to do with that, the arranging for the contracts, um, and, and other various administrative costs. So it's been found uh, through the, uh, the history that, that that is a very typical thing. I, I've seen it range as high as even 20% uh, on others. Um, but we're always open, okay, for discussion depending on what that is. And I will tell you, I think, uh, in, in full satisfaction of maybe what you're asking, uh, uh, Councillor Watson, is that you know, before we do contract for anything, it will come back before you or through Mr. McGovern or whomever that will be, mm -hmm. at which time we can certainly look at what we have. Okay. okay. Fine. Thank you. Further discussion? Councillor Reed. Well, since Harvey's up there, I just wanted to say that I was one of the councillors who asked uh, for a, a relook at this um, and a possible 10 percent reduction in the cost, and I appreciate very much that whether that was the target or whether or not it was what was uh, able to be done, I appreciate very much your looking at that again. I, I had not heard of a 10% target, uh, but I looked <laughs> well, at I it think very the town manager had. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at it very strongly in terms of what we could do, and once we resolved uh, what we had done, what the, what the city, what the town was really looking for, um, we, we wanted to do that, and we, we appreciate having the work. Uh, most importantly of all, and we want to make sure that we're doing a good job for you and that you're all going to be happy with what we do. So, yeah. Thank you. I, I'd like to say that I don't believe this was a situation where the original contract, uh, there was, it was too high. I think it was partly a communication issue where we better defined uh, what the town's needs were and how you would be providing those needs. And once we had that better exchange of information, I think all parties were able to better evaluate the cost of your services. And I think that's a more realistic view of what happened here. And uh, I certainly appreciate uh, your firm's willingness to enter into that dialogue. And uh, um, I think the resolution is a resolution that's good for both parties, because I think your tasks are more defined and uh, obviously that helps us know, to know what you 
are now required to do and what we plan on you doing, but at the same time allows you to plan much more efficiently and estimate much more accurately your cost of providing those services. So I'd like to thank the town manager uh, for um, causing that flow of information which I think has been beneficial to both parties in this, this case. Further discussion? Councillor Fritz. Um, I'm, I'm not clear on the answer that, that you gave to uh, Councilor Watson's um, question because um, you, you said that if there were specialized things that you ran into, you'd have to hire somebody. But those are specifically excluded, that kind of study. And you'd, That's you'd come back to us for more money, if That's I'm correct. understanding this. That's topic. correct. Yeah, the, I mean, what that basically means is that we would come back to you. Okay, we would say if those items are excluded and we find that we have to do those, then we would be back to you. Okay? But and if the additional that service is those been. additional services that the rate sheet is in here for, okay, that we are saying we will do that and utilize that. If that clears that anymore. Um, I'm just wondering, um, Mr. McGovern, when you made the $3 million estimate for this project, does that include the cost of design and construction services? Yes, it does. So that's the whole package. Okay. Um, one thing I was wondering about is the item on towers that is is in here that would be part of um, tower, designing a tower for our purposes. And we're talking about seeking a consultant for town-wide services for towers. So we might not need that. If we don't need something that's in here, then is this cost reduced, or how? If I might, I, I'm a little. A citizen called me today and asked if the tower issue would be on the agenda, and I said no. So I, I want to be careful. I didn't expect the question to come up with this. We've issued a request for proposals uh, that will be that's being considered to look at tower issues in town, and what that is looking is is the issue of where the coverage of the tower goes, where the signal goes. What's in this agreement is the actual design of the physical tower, as opposed to the the, the study of radio waves and whatever other, other those things are to determine the reach of the tower. This is the design of the actual structure, as opposed to the the pattern of the the uh, sound waves okay. or whatever. And waves and no matter waves. whether it were on the Levitt property mm -hmm. or if we decided to put it on the um, say the dump property. This contract uh, provides for the... Would be for either. Yeah, for the design yeah. of the structure, right. And just so the, I mean, that is so the public at home understands mm -hmm. that uh, it's not necessarily true that there will be a tower on this Levitt property. There is a, a very good chance, although it's not resolved yet, and we're still working it through, that the tower would be at the transfer station because that's higher land and it's all a question of how much it would cost with the cable to come back to where the building would be. So all those issues are unresolved. So uh, it is not uh, for sure that there will be a tower of any kind on the Levitt property. And this proposal uh, certainly uh, allows for the tower uh, to be designed uh, at the transfer station. Further questions? Chairman, Councilor Bear. It just uh, seems like an awful lot of money, but uh, I am not an engineer, don't want, know anything about uh, uh, the engineer, and it's uh, not my position to second guess the committee, who I'm sure have worked very hard on developing this. But I, I was wondering, uh, can I, may I ask a question through the manager, uh, through the chair of the manager, uh, on the job related expenses and professional consultants, uh, figures of 10% and 15%. Would it be possible for the town uh, outside this contract to uh, secure these uh, services if necessary elsewhere? Yeah, the job-related expenses, it's, it's difficult to, to secure elsewhere because they're, they're directly job-related. On the, the outside consultants, That's what I was yeah, we would look at it, but, but very, very judiciously. Because, you know, if we've had one experience, if we've had experience with building projects over the years, one thing we have learned is that as much as possible, you want single source uh, 
acquisition of services so that when it comes to liability issues, you're only looking at one party and not a multitude of parties. Was that the committee's thinking in uh, following through from the original proposal then into this uh, contract? To stay with uh, one they, source? They didn't have it for that specific liability reason. They did not have that discussion, no. I think, Henry, it's fair to say from the committee's point of view, this is the typical way that the town has over the years handled this type of planning project. And I think in Michael's experience, uh, related to the committee and related to some of us on the committee, uh, this was recommended as the most prudent avenue. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I agree with you. I don't think any of us are engineers. I think when we looked at uh, this initially, we all had a little sticker shock. Um, and then when you start to really analyze what they have to do, uh, in large part, uh, our own government rules and regulations cause a lot of this cost. I mean, wetlands, and we spent uh, a bundle of time on a, uh, a plant that's rare. I mean, it's just, we have to do, it's an interesting process for anybody in town who wants to be part of, uh, and those of you that are builders I may mean, know this, but it is, it's an eye-opener what the town has to go through to do anything on this Levitt property, uh, even to build two athletic fields. I mean, you know, we have people that say, hey, just get the bulldozer and off you go and we're done. Well, not in today's world, folks. And uh, I, my only problem with the contract was, and I think it's being rectified, is I was hoping to do things a little more efficiently in that the key players, especially with buildings, I was hoping that there would be in the future more work done with those key players before uh, presentations to the entire committee. And I am very comfortable that that is what is happening now. And I think we all learned from that experience. But that certainly didn't escalate the cost. Mm -hmm. I think, if anything, that cost Oath Associates some money because I think they ended up spending some time and doing things a couple times that, in my view, uh, could have been handled a little better. But overall, um, I think uh, the committee is a good committee. We've learned through this process. Uh, there are just a lot of I's to dot and T's to cross, and uh, uh, it's hard to spend this kind of money when there's no tangible benefit for it. But uh, I just don't think there's any way around it in today's world. Further discussion? <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, um, one of the ways that, that the costs were reduced in this was to reduce the number of meetings. And um, I mean, I, I don't know whether 12 meetings to get this project finished is going to be realistic. Um, I mean, I counted five meetings with the planning board and two with two to three with the state agencies alone and and that's not even really counting more you know the additional facilities committees meetings so I'm not sure we're really going to reduce the cost by as much as this sounds here I, well I, I certainly hope we can I think that's a real challenge and I think uh, uh, there's an excellent committee and an excellent committee chair and that we cannot uh, have meetings to have meetings. We can't sit around and just discuss things. Things have to come to a meeting uh, well prepared with a consensus and ready to roll. Uh, if we don't do things that way, uh, there is an amazing amount of consultant time taken up along with uh, frustrating experience by public servants and people that have volunteered their time. And we're just not going to have that. Uh, and yeah, it's an ambitious goal, but I'd rather have an ambitious goal and hard targets than building into a contract a bunch of fluff. Further discussion? I, I just think uh, Councillor Watson's comment about staying within the cost addresses mm -hmm. that issue. Mm -hmm. There's a real clear message in, in terms of what she said that it will, it will not exceed this amount, period. Uh, you know, unless we do find the Indian bones or one of those issues, but uh, the OST compensation will not exceed this cost. Further discussion? Uh, all in favor of the motion? Opposed? It's unanimous, 7 nothing. Thank you, Harvey.
Thank you. We'll enjoy working with all. Thank you, Gilly. Thank you. Appreciate you coming. Next item is item number <coughs> eight, uh, consideration of the acceptance of the report from the Planning Board with proposed technical amendments to the zoning ordinance and referral of the report to the Ordinance Committee. Mr. McGovern. Yeah, these are technical amendments to the June 1997 ordinance. If anyone would like to see a copy of them, uh, they are available on the town website at www.capeelizabeth.com under the planning <laughs> section, and they're also available in the, in the planning office. And it's recommended. Uh, by the planning board who, who have reviewed these, held a public hearing on them, that this be referred uh, to the ordinance. Is there a motion to refer to the ordinance committee? Councilor Barry. I so move, although I'm unable to understand what Mr. McGovern just said. <laughs> <laughs> just say WWW and you're all set. Okay. Second. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Councilor Fritz, did you second? Yes. yes. Uh, further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed. Motion carries seven to zero. Item number eighty-one: consideration of approval of the lease. Excuse of me, Mr. Chairman. Did uh, point of order? Did, did we accept this report? Was that part of the motion? That was part of the motion. I thought it was. I just uh, wanted to make sure for the record. Uh, it definitely was part of the motion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, uh, item eighty-one, you were saying. Item eighty-one. Uh, consideration of the approval of lease of space to the Cape Courier, Mr. McGovern. So we've been leasing uh, space to the Cape Prairie for several years. This is proposed to be a two-year lease. It is for a nominal amount of $50. We really couldn't rent this space otherwise. Uh, we don't use it. Uh, the, the Cape Prairie is an independent newspaper, uh, and uh, but yet they do, I think, provide a real public service. But I would like to emphasize they are independent, and uh, this is a nominal rent of $50 uh, per month. Mr. Chairman, I think that the Cape Courier provides a very useful service to the community and should be encouraged to continue. And I move that uh, we approve the lease of space to Cape Courier so they can continue their good work. Second. Second, Second by Councillor Reed. Further discussion? I hope I get my name. <laughs> Uh, Henry, now you did this just so they would print Look at this. His name, you. Right. It's terrible. So <laughs> <laughs> transparent, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Further discussion? Anybody else want to say something nice about the Cape Courier? This is your opportunity. <laughs> you might, too, get quoted. No. Uh, I'll say something nice. They, they do provide a wonderful service to this town. And I think I speak on behalf of everybody on the town council uh, in thanking all the volunteers that work at the Cape Courier uh, for their efforts. Councilor Reed. I just. I I didn't want to say something nice so that I'd be quoted, but I also want to note that many uh, town councillors and school board members got their start in being active in uh, local politics uh, and service to the school board and the uh, town council by serving as a reporter to the Cape Courier. So there is a rich tradition of keeping the public uh, service spirit alive. And there's a good plug for everyone at home to volunteer for the Cape Courier. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion carries seven to nothing. Uh, item 82, consideration of the endorsement of Cape Elizabeth projects included in the PACS, that's capital P-A-C-T-S, Biennial Transportation Improvement Program. Mr. McGovern. Yes, we have two projects that appear to be in line for funding. Uh, the first was, was, in fact, endorsed last month by the Town Council, a reclamation of Fowler Road. And the second one you have not formally endorsed, but uh, anyone who rides it could, can see that uh, it is desirable. And that's resurfacing of Route 77 from Wildwood to Scott Dyer Road, Shore Road. Uh, that will require, when it's done, a 15 percent local match uh, based on current, uh, based on current state law. And that state law could be changed to reduce that amount. So I would ask that you endorse the Cape Elizabeth projects on that list. So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded that we, uh, the council endorse the projects listed on the PACS list. Discussion? Councilor Fritz. I would assume we would resurface 77 after we finally get the town center design. I mean, would it come to meet that? And yeah. I mean. Yeah, the, the town center, that portion of the town center sidewalk 
drainage project should be done during the next construction season. My sense is that this probably will not be. Further, further discussion? Councilor Watson. I have a question about the um, traffic engineer position that they mentioned under action items, paragraph two. Uh, it says that they're going to be advertising for the position and they're going to be looking for matching funds. Do we have any idea what our share of that may be? No. No? Okay. Further discussion? Uh, I think I should note for the folks at home that uh, we are represented on PACs very ably by our town manager. This is a, uh, in my view, a political process in PACs, and we are well served by our town manager. And uh, I've told him this before, and I've congratulated him before on this, the work he does in this regard, but I'd like to do it publicly again. Further discussion? Uh, Bob Malley serves on the technical committee and does a very good job there, and Maureen O'Meara on the planning committee. I'd like to thank them as well. Right. Further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Opposed? It carries 7 to 0. Item 83, uh, consideration of a request from the town manager to transfer funds to the account for Center for Therapeutic Recreation. Mr. McGovern. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. During last year's budget process, one of the reductions that was made uh, was to assist uh, some of, particularly some of our young people who attend the Center for Therapeutic Recreation. At the time that was done, the town council asked me to let you know if, if real problems came about as a result of the cuts. And in this case, uh, it has. I've received a number of phone calls uh, from uh, individual uh, parents uh, whose uh, kids have been affected by this program. Uh, Karen McPhee, who is the director of the Center for Therapeutic Recreation, is here this evening. But I do want to point out is this request did not come from the agency. It, it came from the result of a number of phone calls. A, a particular, you know, I think, unique additional situation here is that any disruption in service is, is not good at this, very, at this point in time, particularly as we're looking at a renovation of our own pool. Uh, this work is uh, done, the, the therapeutic uh, assistance is done at the Reiki School with trained people uh, in therapeutic recreation where we do not have that same level of service. So I would uh, strongly endorse uh, this, that the $3,000 be allocated to the center to enable the students who are now in the program to continue receiving their therapy. And where is this money coming from? It's coming from the, the it would still come out of funds remaining in the human services account we expect overall at the end of the year uh, that will still be under budget even with this additional allocation. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's staying within that same department but would give this particular agency 3,000 more to provide individual services with. I, I Councilor think, Berry. I think that these uh, folks need this uh, treatment and it's a worthy uh, dedication of the funds and I'd move that the funds be transferred to the account so that this process can continue. Sir, second? Second. Councilor Reed. Further discussion? Councilor Reed. Uh, I would just like to ask that the um, town manager return these funds to the next uh, budget cycle, uh, reinstate them in the budget request, so that when we go to approve the budget, we won't have the after the fact approval. I will consider that if I get a request from the agency, yes. If you get a what? Yes. A request from the agency. Uh, I assume I will. I, I imagine you will. By remaining. <laughs> <laughs> Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? 7 nothing approved. Item number 84, uh, consideration of a request from Central Maine Power Company for a pole location on Reef Road near Oak Knoll Road. Mr. McGovern, and before I'll ask the question, is the pole already <laughs> up? No, the hole has been dug, but the, uh, the pole is not up. This In honor of Bill Jordan, right. I asked that question. Look, a couple of right. folks there have wanted to move some lines underground, and this is moving some poles around so that the, the vista will be much improved and where the pole is going uh, will be in an area that it doesn't block in the view of the ocean. So it's a well thought out plan, and this would, uh, I don't think, offend anyone. Is there a motion? Councilor Reed. Move acceptance of the uh, application for the pole location. Sir, second. Second. Councilor McGinty. 
can't imagine further discussion, but is there any? Mr. Chairman, I think I should abstain because I got a couple of shares of the Central Maine Power Company, if that's a problem. I don't think that is an issue here, okay. but uh, we're going to let you vote, Henry. All right. <laughs> All in favor? Holds. It carries seven to nothing. <laughs> Item 85, consideration of, of uh, acceptances of Heritage Court and Cove View Road and drainage easements in Broad Cove. Mr. McGovern. Yes, these were inspected and reviewed some time ago, but we hadn't actually gotten the deeds. We got the deeds recently. The folks who live on these streets would be thrilled if the town accepted it so that tomorrow morning, uh, should the need arise, which it probably will, we'll be out there uh, plowing those roads. Is there a motion? Councilor Reed. Mr. Chairman, I move acceptance. Second. Second by Councillor Berry. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? Seven to nothing. We are on a roll. <coughs> Item 86, uh, consideration of the recommendation of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission to permit the Portland Symphony Orchestra to use Fort Williams Park for their annual Independence Pops concert. Mr. McGovern. Yes. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Jane Hunter, who is executive director of the symphony, for being here this evening. Uh, I, when I put together the agenda, originally, if I had known she was coming, it would have been placed earlier on the agenda. So apologize for being at, at the end. Uh, I think she a, enjoyed the meeting. Maybe. <laughs> uh, I think everyone always enjoys the Portland Symphony Orchestra concert each year. It's, uh, it's a real highlight of the summer months here in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, the planned date is June 30th, which is a couple days earlier than usual. Mm -hmm. uh, but the symphony is being very cooperative and looking at perhaps spreading out the crowd by having other concerts closer to the 4th because it's uh, expected that there'll be a, a big crowd in Cape Elizabeth regardless. So we hope that, uh, that this change in date is something that's very beneficial to the town and to the symphony as well. Uh, it's been a good relationship. Sir, a motion. Councilor Reed. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to make a motion that we approve and um, also that uh, it is probably uh, goes without saying that the town councillors enjoy the Portland Symphony Orchestra far more than uh, Ms. Hunter, the town council meeting she attended and <laughs> just like to say thank you for the opportunity. I mean, they make better music than we do, huh? For sure. <laughs> no chance. Councilor Carson, you seconded? Second, yes. Mm -hmm. Further discussion? question with the manager. Usually you put on here what the Fort Williams Commission did on this. They, I assume they did approve this? They did unanimously. Okay. I and just got the minutes today confirming it. Okay. And the other thing is that uh, this is, was this run by the Centennial Committee so that this doesn't step on anything? Yes. They, it, they have seen, I don't know if they've seen this letter, but they're aware of the date and this date is on, is on their schedule. And okay. I think if they haven't, they're going to approach the symphony uh, about making sure the Centennial is mentioned. If, or asking that it be mentioned uh, during the concert. I, I can't imagine a symphony not wanting to mention our centennial celebration. <laughs> uh, why, don't, why don't you come on up to the microphone? All the residents of Cape Elizabeth can enjoy uh, not only listening to you, but seeing you. I wouldn't want you to come to this meeting and not say something. Thank you very much. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have been approached by Clint Blood about the centennial and asked if uh, we would be willing to mention the upcoming celebrations uh, at our annual conference, uh, concert if it were indeed to take place there. And we said, of course, we would be happy to do so. Thank you very much. And so thank, thank you for you. coming to our meeting tonight. Thank you. And thank you very much for your support. Hearing no further discussion, all in favor? Seven to nothing. And passes. Citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Appears not to be uh, any citizens. Oh, well, Councilor Reed. I have a question. Um, I was just wondering if the representative had a question of the town council because we sort of skirt him when we talk about the general public and yet he is part of our forum and I just thought I would point that out and ask if Matt had any questions. 
Not really. Maybe about the article that I was supposed to write for the Cape Area about the um, parent student, um, how much money they sp spend extracurricular wise. I don't know when, how I would be able to um, distribute that, who I would d distribute that to. I'll, uh, what, what Matt's talking about is that uh, he gave a report at the, the school board workshop. And I, I don't know. I had trouble hearing that mic. I don't know. Yeah, that, that's Everyone my did. problem. That mic's tough. Uh, he gave a report at the workshop on, on what parents and students are expected to contribute to the uh, interscholastic sports activities, to other sports activities, to everything from band to uh, all the different activities. I think it's a fascinating report. And it was so interesting. It was suggested that Matt write a story for the Courier. And uh, uh, I think the plan is that he will work with uh, Rosemary Reed and uh, with myself. Uh, to look at it to make sure that it's in, it is as inclusive as possible. For Did I answer the question. Yeah. Good. For and just for those of you at home, it was an interesting report in large part because uh, there are many activities that our middle school children are in and our high school children are in that do end up costing parents a large amount of money and booster clubs and other in different forms and it was interesting to try to uh, out of these anecdotal stories um, bring some norms and means and uh, it was just an interesting discussion as were many of the other discussions we had with the school board at our joint workshop hearing no uh, or seeing no citizen come forward to discuss an item not on the agenda. I believe uh, a motion for adjournment would be in order. Councillor Reed. Move adjournment. Councillor Barry seconds. All in favor? Hey, that's unanimous too. All right. <laughs> Meeting's adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank Good night. Vince, don't take it personally. <laughs> no. We were trying to get to where you were. I want to apologize. <laughs>